Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the circular flow model of the economy. So this video is going to describe the circular flow model of the economy, which is a simplified version of a modern macro economy. We will start off with our basic concept here, which is a household. And this is one of the basic building blocks of the circular flow. So households, individuals are spending in the economy. The second major building block of the circular flow is firms and firms are the producing sector of the economy. So firms are producing output goods and services from which households can spend and purchase. In order to link those two together, what we will see is we also have a factor for markets of production. So to bind these, we have a market which combines both households and firms and lets them interact together. The type of things to interact with is labor, land and capital. These are provided by households, so the raw materials for production. And what we see is that households receive an income for this. And this is one way to measure the size of an economy, the GDP level of an economy. Looking at it from the other perspective, we have firms who dip into this market, who are looking for factors of production, who are looking for land, labor and capital. And they will pay these a going rate in the market, be that wages, rent and profits. And if you add up this income level, you generate a GDP measure as well. We also have another way and another market to join these different components. So we also have the market for goods and services, where we move from factors of production to the actual products and services produced. So firms obviously will produce their goods and services and sell them in these markets to households, in which case they'll generate a revenue, which is another measure of the size of economic activity, the GDP. And from this market for goods and services, we can also see that households are going to spend. So goods and services are bought and they're sold into this market. And from the buying perspective, we look at the spending aspect of it. And all this spending added together will give you GDP as well. So this circular flow is a way of measuring the size of an economy from different perspectives, be that revenue, spending or the income levels in an economy. And this is the basic perspective of a circular flow of the macro economy, revenue circulating around the economy. Now we are going to begin to extend the model and make it a bit more realistic. We are going to introduce a new institution, which is the government in this case, because we know a government taxes uh, the economy and spends in the economy as well. So we know that there's that interaction in the circular flow. We're also going to introduce financial institutions into the market because we know these accept savings from households and issue loans to firms, households and the government as well. So we have two more institutions to make our circular flow model a bit more realistic. So the initial part is that the government takes taxes from firms in terms of corporate, uh, corporate tax and also takes taxes from households in the form of income and indirectly in terms of VAT. In this case, after they take in taxes, they, they leak from the economy, they also inject money into the economy through government spending. This may be on roads, infrastructure, hospitals, etc. We also have a situation of injections from firms because firms will invest into, the, uh, into their production process and we also know that they get some of this money for investment from financial institutions through borrowing. We know that financial institutions get the money to loan out from savings from households. So we have a whole range of interactions here between government and financial institutions. We also know that the government can interact with financial institutions and borrow from them. And this is another way in which governments can spend in the economy. So we have a range of interactions here. We also have on the top right hand side of our circular flow, foreign exchange markets, because we know in most modern economies, they trade. There are exports, which are injections into the economy, and there are imports, which are leakages from the economy. So we have an economy in our case here with our circular flow diagram, 
where we are looking at an injection into the economy of exports because this means that money is coming in. Uh, people from outside the economy are paying for our goods and services. We also have our leakages in terms of imports and this is where we spend money that leaves the country. So that's a leakage out of the economy. And what we will see in the final section is any economy is based on a balance of these injections and these leakages. So money coming into and flowing out of the economy all the time. So we're going to start off with our leakages, so money flowing out of the economy. And what we will see is that these are made up of three different items. And the three different items that constitute leakages out of the economy are savings from households. We also have taxes from the government and we have, just as mentioned there, imports in terms of trade. All three will leak money out of the circular flow, flowing out of it and losing revenue. And this will lead to a slowing down of the economy. So if we have a large proportion of leakages, what we tend to have is economic activity, which is slowing down. So a circular flow, which is slowing down in that case. On the other side, we have injections into the economy. So this is money that's pumped into the economy that causes it to kickstart. And we also have three elements here. We have investment from firms, we have government spending from the government itself, and we have it in terms of trade, which is exports. So we have money being brought into the country through that way. And this tends to pump uh, or inject extra diesel or petrol into the economy to kickstart it. And what we see with injections is that it speeds up the economy, that it has more uh, revenue circulating around in that economy. So overall then, we can see that it's a balance of these leakages and injections that cause an economy to increase or decrease the uh, economic activity. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.